It's hard to believe that it's been nearly four years since Chevrolet first revealed to the world the all new eighth generation mid-engine Corvette. Now in that time period, Chevy has done a phenomenal job at completely changing your perception of the Corvette. It finally is taken seriously among enthusiasts, especially with its exotic car looks and its mid-engine design. Now in that time period, we've seen Chevy introduce a high-performance Z06 variant, which I had a chance to drive last year, and most recently, the E-Ray, which is the first ever hybrid Corvette with all-wheel drive. I should be hopefully driving that vehicle sometime later this year. But as you can see this week, we are not driving those more expensive models. We are driving a regular Stingray in the 3LT package because it's been a while since we had a chance to drive one of these vehicles. So we're gonna spend a full week with it. We're gonna put it through our usual battery of tests. And at the end, at the end of this video, we're gonna find out, is the 2023 Corvette still one of the best sports cars that money can buy? Stay tuned to find out. So it's been a couple years since I had a chance to drive just a regular Stingray and I never really turned down the opportunity to review one. So before we start talking about what's underneath the hood and underneath the trunk, let's go ahead and talk about the exterior styling of this car because even though it's been on the market for almost four years now, it still turns a lot of heads. Now you can see my tester is the 3LT Stingray without the Z51 performance package painted in Elkhart blue metallic. Now this is actually a color that's one of my favorites, although personally for me, I would probably go with rapid blue if I was gonna get this car. But as you can see, in terms of the design, it still has very much the exotic car looks that Corvette, that the C8 Corvette has become known for. Even without that Z51 performance package, it turns a lot of heads and really to be honest, I'm not even sure how Chevy's gonna make this car look even better aside from perhaps a Grand Sport with the wide body package. I do love the wide look of the Z06, but you can see this car just looks good in any angle and in most of the colors. Now, as we look at the front fascia, you can see the full LED headlights are gonna be standard. You have LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals and LED low and high beam. A lot of functional openings, of course, down here where you're gonna need cooling for that big V8. Uh, you can see my tester for 600 bucks also has a dealer installed, or a, I'm sorry, a factory installed front lip and rear lip and side skirts. Uh, this is gonna give the car a more aggressive look. You can also see it's got front cameras, uh, it also has the front axle lift system for an extra $2,500. It will raise the vehicle by about two inches in about three seconds. And it also has a memory function for those of you uh, who want the car to remember when you approach your driveway, it'll lift the front end up. Uh, but overall, you can see it just looks mean. It just looks very Ferrari-like. And even without the wider body of the Z51 or the Z06, it still has an aggressive profile. Now, the one thing about the C8s is if you push this little pressure pad, to kind of stick your hand here, there's a pressure pad. If I push that, it's gonna open up the front of this vehicle, which again, Corvettes have never had this until this generation, but there's a total of around 12.6 cubic feet of storage space. I suspect that's when you split it in half. So the front here almost looks like maybe five cubic feet of space. There's gonna be a little bit more in the rear of the vehicle, which I'll show you in a moment, but you can see it's a pretty deep storage area. You should be able to get a 21 inch roller bag in the front, which is nice. It's also carpeted uh, and it's also sealed off from the elements. So this is a nice little surprise to find the additional cargo underneath the front of this vehicle. Now let's go ahead and move around to the side profile because uh, this car still has a really aggressive look to it from the side, even without that Z51 performance package. You can see uh, my tester has an optional forged kind of machine gray finished wheel. These are a 19 inch wheel in the front, uh, riding on a 245 width tire. You can see without the Z51 performance package, it's actually got a Michelin Pilot Sport 4 all season tire. These are the standard brakes, a 12.6 inch front rotor, similar size in the rear, four pot caliper with a red painted caliper. That's an extra 700 bucks. The standard option will be a black painted caliper. Remember the Z51 upgrades the brakes to high performance pads, Brembo brake pad or Brembo uh, rotors and larger brakes by about an inch. Now, uh, moving around the rest of the side profile, you can see this is where Chevy really had to make a huge change by making this mid-engine because they pushed the front passenger compartment about 16 and a half inches forward to make room, of course, for the engine compartment. There are functional vents back here. You can see this is the necessary intake uh, and cooling of course, for that 6.2 liter V8. And they also made this new Corvette about five inches longer than the prior generation, the C7, 182.3 inches long. This is definitely on the longer end for the segment uh, and its wheelbase is about an inch longer. It's also two inches wider 
uh, which is funny because Chevy also offers a wider version of this car if you go for the Z06. Now looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see this is probably the most controversial design element of this car. It's still instantly recognizable as a Corvette for me, um, but the taillights, a lot of people didn't like that when they first came out. My tester also has the performance exhaust, which you can see there are uh, quad tips at the back. The Z06 has a center outlet quad tip exhaust, but this engine still sounds good with the performance exhaust system. Let's go ahead and fire it up so you can hear how it sounds. And again, there's really nothing like a small block V8. So if you're comparing this car to a 911, the Corvette just kind of has that advantage for it. Now you can see here the rear spoiler is kind of like a low profile uh, color keyed deck lid spoiler. Remember, if you go for the Z51, it's gonna have more of a pedestal style spoiler. It's a little bit taller. It adds some actual downforce. And if you open up the cargo area, before I do that really quick, there's the functional heat extractors. And then let's go ahead and open up the cargo area and talk about the powertrain. Now back here, if you guys go for the coupe, you're gonna be able to see the engine, which just looks like a masterpiece with the red valve covers, the way it's kind of uh, pictured like a, almost like a photo of the engine, which uh, has the transparent glass, which is nice. But underneath the hood, you still have the company's 6.2 liter LT2 uh, pushrod V8. It also has direct injection and variable cylinder management. And with the performance package, it makes 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. It adds five horsepower by going with this package. The base models without the performance package or the, uh, or the Z51 package or the performance exhaust make 490 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. That's like an extra 60 or 35 horsepower versus the old LT1 in the C7 Corvette. And again, for a base model, it, have, it offers plenty of performance. It all goes out through a one-choice only, eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. There is no manual still available for this car, uh, even on the Z06. We don't know if Chevy will ever do a manual for this generation, but again, it's a wonderful transmission. Uh, fuel economy is rated at 16 in the city, 24 on the highway. Uh, it will do zero to 60 Chevy claims in around 2.9 seconds with the Z51 performance package. We finally have our equipment. We'll test it out, see what we can get in the real world on these all season tires. It has a top speed of 194 miles an hour, which is actually similar to what you get in the Z06. Uh, and as this one sits, its curb weight is right around 3,300 pounds. Uh, the convertible version adds another 80 or 100 pounds of extra weight. So it is still pretty lightweight by today's standards. Now, in terms of the cargo area down here, you can see uh, this is probably another six and a half cubic feet of space. It's actually a pretty long amount of space. It's also relatively deep. It's just not very big because the engine bay is over here. Remember, if you guys get the convertible version, the, how, the power hardtop will actually sit over the engine so you can't actually see the powertrain if you guys go for the convertible. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the interior because obviously there are no changes to the exterior of the Corvette for 2023. Before we get inside, however, I wanna show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the current Corvette key fob. It's practically a variation of the other fobs you see on other GM vehicles. You can see it has the Corvette badge on it as opposed to a Chevy logo. It also includes remote start on the fob, which is nice. In addition to your usual lock, unlock, uh, you can also open up the rear hatch and the front trunk and a panic function, function, which is nice. Now, the Corvette includes a digital latch door handle system so that if I reach my hand underneath here, there's a little pressure pad or like a button. If I push that, you can see that's what pops the door open for you. There's also a manual system where if the power goes out, there's another latch down there where you can open up the vehicle from the inside. Now you can see my tester being the 3LT includes the upgraded interior, such as the full leather stitched interior along the door panels, along the dash. You also can get the option of this natural color interior where it's very nice brawn with these tan seat belts, which are an extra 500 bucks. And then my tester has the GT2 uh, performance seats. So these are not the competition buckets, but you can see they hold you very nicely. They adjust in like 14 different ways, I want to say. Uh, they are heated and ventilated. They are, that's included when you guys go for the 2LT and up package. And you can see they also have the carbon buckets uh, along the seat frame, which is definitely nice. Uh, the door panel you can see is covered in stitched leather with contrasting stitching. And then my tester also has the stealth interior trim package. So you can see instead of a bright aluminum, it's kind of a blacked out finish. That's new for 2023. It goes well with the carbon fiber look, especially with this natural color. You can see full stitching along the lower portion here. 
and you can see here uh, a carpeted area where there's a little bit more storage. You can also open up the front and the back trunk from over here, which is definitely nice. The windows are one touch automatic for all for all for the two windows, which is nice. You also have power folding mirrors, and then my tester also has the 14 speaker Bose Performance Series audio system, which sounds good in case you get tired of listening to that V8 engine. Now, getting inside, you can see the step in is low. This is a very low slung sports car. Uh, as I get in and shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk. And then you can see here in terms of the tech, nothing here has really changed. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail with it. The start stop button is right here. It's kind of blocked by the steering wheel. But you can hear when it starts up, it really just reminds you that you're in a special vehicle. I also love the Corvette's kind of flat bottom and flat top steering wheel. So it's almost like kind of a square steering wheel. Uh, which is nice it looks fantastic it has all your usual buttons on it including a z mode here for the zora drive mode that's kind of an homage to the father of the corvette you can see there's also paddles on the wheel for the eight speed dual clutch and then you can see the dash also has beautiful stitching along the entire area including uh, around the center console area you can see this is just a very driver centric interior which i love uh, and I also love the 12 inch digital display here. And then it also has an eight inch display here, which is the Chevrolet MyLink system. It includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see there's the CarPlay. The screen is starting to look small, but again, this is a Corvette. And I think that the way it's laid out, I'm accepting the fact that it's an eight inch screen. It, it still looks good. Although I kind of wish there was less of a black border there, which kind of goes away when you go to the Chevy display a little bit more. Uh, it also includes GPS. If you guys go for the uh, 2LT and up package, which includes factory embedded GPS, for those of you who plan to use the GPS function, most of you will probably end up using your phone. Uh, this system here is relatively easy to use. And if I put the vehicle in reverse, you can see there's the backup camera, which also includes a front camera system. Uh, so you can make sure you're not gonna curb the front splitter or hit those wheels which again is a very important thing to not do if you have a vehicle like this. Now over here, this controls the eight speed dual clutch transmission. It's got these uh, buttons over here and like a toggle switch area. You can also adjust the traction control off, put it in competition mode, and you can also raise and lower the front axle lift system. And that button here engages the front camera. For those of you who are planning to front park this vehicle, you don't wanna curb your front splitter. Uh, and then this mode over here changes your drive mode. So there's a sport mode, there's a touring mode, and then there's also a track driving mode. And then there's also an individual setting the track mode really changes the way that looks for those of you uh, who want the full-on track experience. Now you can see there's a big array of buttons over here where it's kind of like a vertical oriented layout. You have heated and cooled seats, your dual zone climate control. Down in the lower portion here, this is for your passenger controls. I like how Chevy orients this. I think it's just very logical and it's easy to use. Cup holder area over here. Not much other storage in this vehicle. Uh, and you can see here with the Stelt interior trim package, instead of the bright aluminum, it's kind of like a dark metallic finish, which again, looks really good with the carbon fiber. Uh, over here, you can see on the center console, there's a decent storage area, two USB ports in there, a USB-C and a USB-A. Your wireless phone charging pad is over here. And then you can see these seats are comfortable and supportive. I like them a lot. They're not overly aggressive, but you can take this on a longer trip and it just, uh, you, you feel super supportive and it doesn't hurt your back, at least for me. Uh, I love the headliner and the fact that you have Alcantara and suede along the headliner, which is nice. Alcantara along the, uh, sun visors which is great and then if you open this up you can see the glove box is a pretty big size it's stamped uh, and it's lined with felt and then my tester with the higher trims you also get the digital camera review mirror which i highly recommend because without it you can see the view out of the back is pretty atrocious so i highly recommend going for that um, this car also includes a heads-up display which is included on the 2lt uh, which is nice but overall this has most of the tech that i expect it has a fairly good amount of space as well it just has, again, a view that you kind of have to get used to, but it just feels special. It feels well-made, it smells nice in here, uh, and it just feels very comfortable. It kind of fits me like a glove. Uh, so that's something that I love about the new uh, C8 Corvette. So here we are back in the regular Stingray Corvette. It's hard to believe that this car has been out since 2020. So it's been out on the market for four model years. Well, technically three, but it's been on the sale since 2020. Uh, and it's been a while since I drove the regular Stingray. Now, obviously the big news with this Corvette is the E-Ray, the hybrid model uh, with the front electric motor, which has this powertrain with the electric motor. I've had a chance to also drive the Z06, not for a week though, fell in love with the Z06 as it kind of addresses my issue with this powertrain where the V8 is nice, it just doesn't match the exotic looks of the body. Now this model here doesn't have the Z51 performance package, which means we're lacking the proper launch control and the limited slip diff. I've never actually had a chance to zero to 60 test this Corvette. So let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. Ooh. Oh God, this thing just takes off. 
<laughs> Zero to 60 in 3.59 seconds. <laughs> wow, this thing definitely still takes off really nicely. I love the way the uh, car feels. I love the way it puts the power down. Even the Z06, which has almost 200 more horsepower than this car, still will put the power down really well. Remember, if you guys get the Z51 package, Chevy quotes three seconds, 2.9 seconds. Uh, 3.59, that's a pretty respectable time for a vehicle that's supposed to be the base model. Now, remember this car competes with Porsche 911s and the 911, I will say, is most likely gonna be slightly quicker than this car. But my recommendation is go for the Z51 package because it will include you know, the launch control, the limited slip diff, the stickier tires. We're on Michelin Pilot all season tires right now and it is uh, a little bit colder outside, so kind of keep that in mind. Oh, 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 oh God, this thing's still so fast. <laughs> Very consistent there. And this is with it more going slightly uphill. So I suspect this car could be a little faster than 3.59. We'll see if we can do another run up ahead. But for a car that is lacking the Z51 package, it still puts the power down really well, despite the fact that we're on all season tires. I have the car in track mode right now. I've left the traction control on and it's not even slipping, which is nice. And my tester is missing the Magno Rheological Damper. So the adaptive dampers, which really does a wonderful job at adjusting the suspension in this car. But you know what? Even in this base suspension setup without the Magno Ride dampers, the Corvette still rides extremely well. This is a really well-balanced sports car that has excellent ride and handling balance that's relatively quiet as well. My tester does have for $1,200 the performance exhaust, which adds five more horsepower and five more pound-feet of torque. It's highly worth the upcharge for those of you who want this. And honestly, for a performance exhaust, it's still a little bit quiet. I actually want it to be a little bit louder. Uh, really looking forward to getting my hands for a longer period of time in the Z06 with that high revving flat plane crank V8. But the steering in this car is just immensely sharp. It just has a ton of heft, uh, very good feedback as well. Corvette, this generation Corvette has been known to understeer and I definitely feel that when you start pushing this car at the limits, especially when you have the car with the, the model without the limited slip diff and you have the all season tires, it's just not going to be able to grip as tenaciously as the all are the summer tires. <laughs> this car is just a joy. It's such a joy. And again, you can get this car with a V8, an American V8, versus the flat six and the 911, which don't get me wrong, love a 911. I've always loved a 911. But there's something about this American pushrod muscle V8. I just wish it was a little bit louder. I want it to be a little bit more sonorous. Uh, and that's exactly why you buy the Z06. That gives you that noise that you're looking for. Oof. Oh God, this thing is so fast. <laughs> 3.5 seconds there, so we'll take that. Remember, this is a car that's on all seasons without the Z51 performance package, but it just, it's so beautiful in the fact that it just launches all day long. Uh, and it doesn't slip, it doesn't slide around, and that's because of the mid-engine design. Because Chevy put that power or the engine over the rear axle, it just gives this car the grip that it needs. I'm really looking forward to driving the all-wheel drive model. <laughs> Man, I seriously have forgotten how fun this car is. Like, I, I've, I've driven so many variants of the Porsche 911, including the Carrera T, which by the way, the Carrera T is still far more expensive than this car. And I did get a slightly quicker zero to 60 time in that car. And also that had a manual. Remember, you can't get a manual in the Corvette, which is a shame, but this eight speed dual clutch is a Chevy design transmission. It gets the job done really well. Ooh. <laughs> really responds lightning quick to your, sh the, the, the paddles and the shifts are just really fast. They're aggressive. It, they put the engine right in the meat of the power band, which is important. <laughs> this engine just wants to keep revving it. It has a relatively low, like 6,500 RPM red line, and I just want to rev it more and more. <laughs> wow, and even this car with the brakes, this car has the standard 12.6 inch brakes, and they feel really good. Although if you're gonna take this car out to a track, you're gonna want the high performance brakes and the Brembo brakes that you get with the larger one inch rotors on the Z51 package. 
So that's all kind of important if you guys plan on tracking this car daily. But let's go ahead and switch the drive mode here over to touring mode. This is where most uh, owners are probably gonna drive this car. And here in this mode, you can see it just gets really comfortable. Even without the adaptive dampers, you can see it rides well. It has decent visibility out of the front. Uh, that low, that very short nose again is something you have to get used to for a Corvette owner. I love, or, or for older Corvette owners, I love the digital camera review mirror because without it, if you try to look behind that, you can't really see anything aside from the engine compartment. So that's a wonderful feature that I highly rec recommend. Uh, and in terms of the fuel economy, in my, my week's worth of testing, I averaged around 19 mpg in mixed driving. Uh, that is with it primarily uh, in a probably, I'd say, highway driving. On the, in the highway, pure highway driving, I got around 22 mpg, which is not bad. This car is rated to get 24 mpg, so technically the old C7 vet was a little bit more fuel efficient, but again, that's not really the point of Corvettes. Uh, the Corvette Hybrid, the E-Ray, should be slightly more efficient, if not around the same as this. That's not what Chevy was targeting was efficiency. They were targeting performance. Uh, but the seats on this model here, these are the GT2 seats with the natural leather. It's comfortable. It smells really nice in here. It feels really well made. It feels high quality. I mean, there's something about the C8 that like finally talks to me as a young, as an enthusiast. This car doesn't just appeal to old people anymore. That's the beauty about the C8 is it attracts a younger buyer uh, because of its exotic car looks and feel, its solidity of how well it handles, how well it drives, how you know well it's built as well. It is literally the car that proves that Chevy can build a world-class sports car when they really put their mind to it. Uh, and it's a car that gets me super excited. Even the base Stingray without the Z51 package is still a wonderful car to daily, a wonderful car to drive on a curvy back road. And then if you want the track toy, go get the Z06 or go get the Z51 performance package. Or if you want the all-weather toy, you can now get the E-Ray, which again, those cars are far more expensive. But this car here, with its under six figure price tag certainly feels like you're piling a car that's over six figures and that's kind of the beauty about the corvette as well and uh, to be honest like going with the base model you have nothing to be ashamed about at least base performance this one here is a 3lt but overall i'm still very impressed with how this car drives it still gets me excited and i am excited to drive the uh, corvette e-ray the hybrid version hopefully later this year now back in 2020, the C8 Corvette was definitely my favorite vehicle that I tested back then. It really blew my mind and it made me a believer of Corvettes and I could personally see myself owning one of these vehicles someday, which is a big thing for me to say because I've always been a Porsche guy, but I think that's where Chevy got the new Corvette right. So as they've basically progressed the C8 generation, they've made incremental changes to the Stingray over the years, but basically this is the same car that I drove about three years ago. Obviously the Z06 and the E-Ray is gonna be a different story. And then there's also uh, upcoming versions called the Grand Sport, uh, the ZR1, and then the upcoming Zora, which will sit at the very top of the Corvette hierarchy. But just what about the regular Stingray? After spending the week driving this vehicle, I'm reminded of just how well-rounded this car is. It is a true competitor to all of the other sports cars on the market, including the Porsche 911, which has always been the benchmark. And this vehicle still remains one of the most desirable cars that money can buy. I mean, if you want to get your hands on one of these, good luck finding one for sticker. And if you want to order them, they're going to take some time. Chevy is still taking orders for the Z06. But again, production is very constrained right now because of the supply chain uh, issues. Now, speaking of which, Chevy actually managed to sell a pretty good amount of cars last year. I was surprised to see the number. They moved 37,000 units here in the U.S., which the number has been going up over the last three years since it's been on sale. And back in 2020, they did around 21,000 units. So sales have almost doubled, which almost 40,000 units for a sports car, a two-seater mid-engine sports car that's rear-wheel drive is a phenomenal number. It outsells a Porsche 911 by about three to one. So again, Chevy's doing something right with this car, especially when most people are paying around $90,000 for this vehicle for one that's relatively well-equipped. Now, speaking of which, if you are trying to get your hands on a Corvette, there was a time where you could buy this car for under $60,000, but those days are gone because remember everything's kind of getting more expensive for 2023 chevy actually jacked up the price by this car by about twenty three hundred dollars compared to the 2020 model this car has gone up in price by about five thousand dollars so you're going to spend around 65 grand for a base one lt most people are going to go up to at least a two lt that'll give you the upgraded interior the heated and cooled seats the bose stereo system stuff like that uh, that's going to start at around 72 grand. This 3LT that I'm showing you starts at around $76,000. It includes the upgraded leather on the inside. And plus my tester with all the options, including the front axle lift, the performance exhaust, the upgraded interior, 
of the carbon fiber interior and the stealth interior trim package. With destination, this car comes in to around $88,000, which I know 88 grand is a lot of money. Uh, keep in mind, if you wanna get the Z51 performance package, it's an extra $6,000. And Chevy also makes a 70th anniversary package for an extra $6,500, which basically includes badging and a special placard. Because remember, this car has been in production for 70 years. So you can get a Stingray to be close to that $100,000 mark, which I'd probably say keep the options in check. 85 grand seems like a steal for this car considering the performance, the exotic car looks. And keep in mind again, if you guys want the Z06 or the uh, E-Ray, those are gonna cost well over $105,000 to start especially if you guys want to get one that's well optioned. The convertible version is also going to be another $7,000 on top of the Stingray's base price. So kind of keep that in mind. But overall, if you guys are looking for a sports car, whether it's American made or not, the C8 Corvette continues to be one of the best vehicles out there, especially for the money. It undercuts a lot of its competitors, namely Porsche, by thousands and thousands of dollars. And yet it doesn't feel like it actually feels like a cheaper vehicle. It feels like it's built along the same scale. And that's one of the reasons why this vehicle has been such a hit for Chevy in terms of sales and in terms of gaining respect from enthusiasts, especially those younger buyers. Well, all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.